Mary Meat Witch Link, the Twisted Witch Midnight Moon Song here. And today I was wanting it to be the Void video. But after filming it, my phone decided to delete it. So I do not have what I did. And I don't have enough time to revisit it just yet. So I went ahead, went ahead and made this kind of shorter video for you. Just kind of in its place so I didn't just leave you guys hanging with no video. Now today we are going to talk about something I call magic boards and I do not know what other name they go by. Um, I'm sure that you probably heard it in some other way and that's fine. Actually if you have heard it, let me know <laughs> so I know what else to call these. And this book is what it's in. This book itself is kind of like volume two of my main grimoire. But why I haven't shown you guys this one is because this one's inherently more personal. It's so, so personal, guys. To the point where I really don't feel like I can really show any of it but what I'm going to show you today. It's filled with, while well, the other book was filled with the average stuff I use versus, you know, the other stuff I use, like crystals, herbs, that sort of thing, and the ins and outs and simplicity of uh, spell work so I don't have to write a bazillion spells out and that sort of thing. This one deals more with the mental side of things. It deals a lot more with who I am inside, who and how I work. Um, I have people I admire, songs I like, and that sounds like on the surface very okay, very telling. And yeah, I'm going to tell you, if you ask me what my favorite song is, I'll definitely tell you. But this book is about so much more than that. It's, um, I was calling it my me book for a long time, but it's actually, um, the compendium. That's what I decided to call it. That's not a super great title page, but it works and I'm happy with it. But what it deals with is the personal parts of those things. For example, I have written down my favorite songs and the lyrics that speak to me from those songs. The personal part that comes in is why those lyrics speak to me and how they tie in to me with certain parts of my life, certain private parts of my life, mind you, certain things that happen to me and that sort of thing. So for example, if I'm having a hard day and I need, let's say, an extra boost of uh, confidence, I could go to a page that talks about song lyrics and stuff that give me that confidence. Or I could go to a page that talks about a specific person I like, or even something that happened to me that made a drastic change and super influential impact on my life that ensued confidence in me in some way. And instead of just sitting there and rereading the stuff over again, I just open it because what I've done is as I wrote the things down, I put my intention of the feelings and the thoughts that gave me into each word. So if I want to do a quick spell for confidence, I can turn to that personal story, that personal thing, whatever it is that's in there and do meditation on it. I can use its energy to focus into a charm or something like that that I can then wear that can help boost my confidence, that sort of thing. But the stuff that's in it is definitely very um, personal and it can definitely be along the lines of shadow work in a way, because there are lots of things in here, certain things I've gone through, trials that I've both won and failed and you, I believe you can learn anything from the, both winning and failing. In fact, sometimes I think you learn more from failing than you do winning. But yes, I digress. That's kind of what this book is, so you're not really going to see a lot of it. But however, you are going to see the board. And the reason why I put this board in here is because I felt it had really good symbolism. The board is in roughly the center of the book, and I believe that while energy and magic is all around us, it to use it and to move it and to make it do what you want it to do, that will come from your center. That will come from inside you. So that's the symbolism with that. And I wanted to put it in this particular book because, like I said, it's a very personal, deeply rooted part of myself that I put into it. So 
it feels nice to have this particular thing inside something that's very very deeply rooted into me now for those of you who don't know what a magic board is um well a magic board technically is anything with the um pentacle and stuff anything that any flat surface that you can put your magic stuff on that you use for magic but this specific specific magic board is in the grimoire and what you do with it simply is magic any and all magic i'm sure that those of you who saw my um walkthrough video my tour video on my main grimoire know that i put what i call meditation grids inside them which are pictures and things that have a certain energy to them that you draw from to meditate well this in this sense is kind of like that but well those have specific things attached to them this is a go all for all magic in general and you can do like oh that was shaky sorry and like i said you can do meditation you can do whatever magic you want here you can do physical magic meditation you can do astral work you can do dream work you can do anything you want and this type of thing also is very very good for those people who move around a lot, who travel to different places, because let's face it, even if you have a travel altar, that doesn't mean you always get to bring it. And if you're in a position where you want to bring something that's magic and you can't bring your altar, you can always bring a journal like this or just a, you know, a, your travel grimoire or something that has something like this in it. So you can just open up to it and all your symbolism is there. Now, like I said, this is just my version. Everybody has their own version. If you want to recreate this in your own from what you see, go for it. You know, I don't mind at all when people take inspiration from my, gr my grimoires. If I show it to you, then that means I'm okaying you to take information. You can copy it letter for letter, or you can, you know, rearrange it, do what you want with it to make it yours. So to start off, I'm going to explain the star. Now, like most witches, I do use the pentacle. Pentacle for me, not pentagram. But I do, like I said, I use the star. That's a kind of a given. And of course, everyone knows the elements. Air, earth, fire, and water. And of course, spirit. Now, quick thing. <laughs> you might notice my air is purple. That's because ever since I can remember, when I first started working with elements, even before it was a magical thing, I always gave purple to air. Air always seemed purple to me. I don't know why, but it did. And it was later on that I learned that everybody else likes to use yellow. And I was so confused because I was like, but no, yellow is the color of like electricity and energy and sometimes light, that sort of thing, not air. <laughs> so <laughs> yes, <laughs> so you'll see that mine's purple for that reason. Now inside each point, you will see these swirly mabobs, they're going into this black spirally circle in the center. And what that circle is, is void. It's a representation of void. Well, each point of the star represents a specific element, but those who practice void magic, well, most anyway, I can't speak for everybody, I'm not trying to. Void is the place that all magic begins. It is the place that has gives birth to our, all the energy that we use in the world. And eventually all energy will come back to it. And so, as you can see within it, there's a spiral, there's two spirals. There's the white spiral and the black spiral. The white spiral spins one way, and so by contrast, the black spiral spins the other way, indicating the both invocation and the banishment of energy, depending. Now, like I said, these can be seen in both ways as it's either coming out of the void to go into the other elements or the other elements coming inward to the void returning to it and i know not everybody uses void i do though and that's why this that's why i felt i needed this and it's sacred to me for that reason now the rim here the rim is a well, almost a perfect circle. I used a perfect circular thing, but as I was writing, things got a little pushed, so that that happens. So it's almost a perfect circle. It says in runic, my magic manifests. Runes are very important to me. I use them in my work a lot. I read them. Um, my main patron that I work with is Loki. So 
runes are very, very special to me. But if you don't want to use runes in yours, you don't have to. You don't even have to put a circle of words around there at all if you don't want to. If you do and you don't want to use this, you can use the, the witch's alphabet. You can use uh, Latin. You can use Sanskrit. Whatever speaks to you. And I always recommend people, if they're going to put it in here, do it in a circle. Because circle is the... If you're working with sacred geometry, it is the symbol of time, of time's ever-moving force. It is the symbol of the ever-moving force of life, cycles in general. It is a very powerful, powerful symbol. That's why you actually see so much of it within paganism, whether it's the star or whatever, the sun, the moon. A whole bunch of sacred things are done in circles. So in implementing those sacred circles... See what I did there? Into your craft, into this board, can bring so much more power into it. But only if you draw power from that type of sacred geometry. You don't have to. If you are a person that really just looks at circles and says, okay, whatever is a circle, then, and you feel like writing this as a square or even using the writing to make the star, you know, go for it. Do whatever you feel called to do. And if you see what I've done here, and you say everything in here speaks to me the exact same way and you want to use it, use it. But only if it speaks to you. Because it's your belief in it that gives it that power. Now, moving on to the corners. The left corner here is the embodiment of death energy. For those of you who know me pretty well by now, you know I work with death energy and I work with death craft. Altogether, my craft can be summed up as dark folk magic. And this is definitely one of those things that I work with a lot. I work with lots of bones and that sort of thing. So obviously, the symbol of death, I felt, would be perfect as a, a skull. Now, the skull also is a very powerful bone. It's probably the most powerful bone because it contains all six senses. Your sight, your smell, your taste, your hearing, and then your thought. Your sixth sense, that, that eye. Everything is contained within the skull. That's what makes it so powerful. And likewise, the death energy also encompasses the world of the dead. The spirit realm, whatever you want to call it. The underworld. And this is so this is not just a symbol of death energy, but also that spirit realm and the working with the spirits that I do. This symbol can help to draw energy from that place so I can work in my book. And now, across from that, opposite, is this, which symbolizes life. I used a rose because a rose is definitely, in language of the flowers, they have many, many, many things. But a rose is definitely one of those symbols of life. And I colored it red to refer to life's blood and the heart in general. Now, in that, I also brought forth the energy of the present and the living world where this is the spirit world this is the here and the now and those that are alive and things that are alive give off energy as well so they need to be represented here now for the top the dark moon and the dark star symbolize not just night but darkness in general and with darkness comes shadow work shadow magic it comes uh, chaos magic. Everything that comes with that dark comes here. And of course, opposite that, we have the sun, which is obviously a symbol of daytime, of light and life energy, that sort of thing. And order. This is chaos, this is order, this is night, this is day. You see the pattern. I'm definitely one, for those of you who've seen my videos before, know that I say quite often that I work in balance. I do try to keep that balance between everything and that to me is extremely, extremely important. Now, when I drew this and wrote and wrote this, every intention was put into each pen stroke. I drew the rose all the time, putting the intention of love, of life, of life's blood, of the present. I put that all in there. Same with, excuse me, same with everything else. That's very important. And then, of course, after you do that, because the intent's in here, it's good to cleanse it. I use, use the sound bowl as well as smoke. And I just 
I cleansed it and then reaffirmed all the energies that were in there. And this is it. Now, because I carry this one with me the most, I always have access to this little thing here if I need it. Um, it is in a very easy to carry journal. I like to keep my journal simplified into easy carry books, as most of you know. Um, but if you want to put it in your massive big grimoire, you know, go for it. If you want to put it in your travel grimoire, go for it. You know, that's all on you. And like I said, once you're done with this, once you actually want to use it, you can sit there and meditate with it. You can put a crystal here. I do recommend not putting anything like candles or liquids on it because it is paper. It is a book. So be careful with that. Um, but stuff like crystals and that sort of thing, definitely just be sure they're not too sharp and they're not too dirty or anything you put on it so it doesn't damage the paper in any way. Um, but if that's something you're into, if you want to take dirt and put dirt over it to put earth into it, go for it. If you want to um, put all the elements into it, kind of some people will do that to some things like this. They'll um, rub dirt into, they'll do it before they actually write anything on it. They'll put droplets of water around the paper. They'll smudge um, dirt on it. They will burn just the rim of the paper, and then they will blow on it and put all the elements in there that way. And that's something you like to do. You know, go for it. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to damage the book. So, and I wanted my pages to still remain kind of uniform. So, yeah. But there you have it. That's my magic board inside my grimoire. I hope you all enjoyed this video. And if you really, really want to, you can leave a like, a comment, and subscribe, and I would be very, very happy. But yes, I hope you all in get some inspiration from this. If you do, you know, go ahead and share it with me. I, I love to see and hear about um, the things you guys do in your grimoires. So, I guess until next time, hopefully, I'll be able to re-record the Void video. But... Have a great time and blessed be.